Welcome, dears. The class is amazing. Oh, I'm connected to my headphone. Welcome, dear. Because well, I was like, class is amazing. Okay. okay. Wait, hold on, mom. We're kind of okay. You have questions? I have questions. We both have questions. Have, we have books, girl. We have books. That have and books. we have Miss Kathy, who is like a seed of inspiration and wisdom. Such a garden. Hello, Miss Kathy. Thank you for joining me in class. Okay. What is Sancho? Sancho is actually, we say Namyo Horengi until three times, kind of like a greeting or a closing, you know, so it's usually how we end our prayers. Mm -hmm. Or if we have a gathering together, we'll, you know, chant three times together before we all go home. So it's kind of just a way of um, the recognizing um, the the Buddha nature in ourselves and others and kind of like saying goodbye. Uh -huh. Would you say that's the equivalent to namaste? Namaste? Yes. Very much so, yeah. Would you say namaste is the equivalent to inviting the Holy Ghost in? No, we don't have to break it down Christian-wise, right? Because like the Holy Ghost is just a spirit, right? It's an entity, it's an energy. But when we're saying namaste, we're saying I honor the divine in you and you honor the divine in me. Right. Yep. And when we do sancho, we're saying I honor the Buddha nature in you and you honor the Buddha nature in me. Mm -hmm. And it's all a correlation, a beautiful honoring of what? The self. Which is what we say when we say nami ho renge kyo. I'm right. unlocking my highest potential. That's right. So that's right. We totally understand that all people have this potential inside that we call Buddhahood. And the way that we are able to see our Buddhahood or to recognize our Buddhahood and to have our Buddhahood help us in our daily lives is through chanting. So when we chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, it kind of like opens up this Buddha nature that we have inside of us so that we can feel it and see it, know that it's there. And so the, the more we chant, the more this, the stronger our Buddha nature gets. And, you know, ultimately, we say nam myoho renge kyo, but what that really means is believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, believe in yourself. You have unlimited potential, and we just need to bring it out. Yes! Okay, one more correlation. I've been studying qi, which is the Chinese concept of energy flow. And I have a saying that I can't say right now, but it is essentially your life force is your qi and your qi is your life force. So the correlation of that is the 10 worlds, like the mindset. Oh, sorry. The mindset of the 10 worlds, right? Like your qi will be blocked if you're in a lower mindset. Just like your Buddha nature or your path will be derived if you're not in the proper mindset. Oh, I love that you're saying that because the biggest benefit, I've been doing this chanting now for 49 years, and the biggest benefit that I see in my life is my life force. Mm. Because nothing is more important than our, our life force is like how much energy we, do we have? You know, how much can we bring ourselves into functioning each day, right? Mm -hmm. And the higher our, um, that's really why we're chanting is that, you know, as we pull up this Buddha nature, we're really strengthening our life force. And so we can see ourselves getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And, you know, because I've been doing this for so long, and I know many people, I've, you know, practiced with many, many people throughout these 49 years. And some come and go and come and go. And some are just steady. And, and the people who are steady um, get stronger and stronger and stronger. And the people who come and go, it's kind of like they get strong and then they relax. And then they get strong, and then it's kind of like working out. Mm -hmm. You know, if we if we continue to work out, our bodies stay strong. But it only takes a couple weeks of not using our muscles, and they start, you know, just deteriorating <laughs> so very, very, very quickly. So our life is like that. Our life has this energy that we can keep getting stronger every day. It's like we're training for a marathon, you know, and then. Um, if we're doing it every day, you know, we're training every day, 
when the marathon comes, we're ready. But if we're going to train for a marathon and we train for a couple of days and we relax for a week, and we train for a couple of days and we relax for a week, the day of the marathon, our body might be like, no, we're relaxing today. We're not ready. <laughs> so, life force. Life force, life force, life force is the most important thing there is. Thank you, Miss yes. Kathy. Yeah, raising your life condition, life force, yes. When we talk about the ten worlds and there is the correlation of the three evil paths and the four evil paths, it reminds us of the four favorable winds and the four unfavorable winds. I feel like they Three go, kings and four demons, yeah. Yes, they go hand in hand. Yes, they do. I feel like they manifest themselves through people's actions. Actions. Can you elaborate? So, when you create the action, make sh sure that you're creating a in-depth action and not so much a superficial action because when you create the in-depth action is from what I've been case studying for myself and around me is when you get your true inconspicuous benefits when you're doing superficial is the lackadaisical then you're that's when you see the change of all of the animalities coming around. Squirrel. Ooh. <laughs> See? The animalities. <laughs> Immediate. 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 <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's when you see the animalities and all the other the circular things coming about mm -hmm. is what they, that's a whole nother correlation. The whole circular part coming about because then you're able to recognize so much when you are in depth instead of being superficial. You're able to use your intelligence and your logic and then the solely using your intelligence and logic and then the mindset changes because now you know that you have that in you of being in depth with intelligence and logic and your own innate wisdom and to allow all of that to come in and then you have, there is authority, but then the authority that you think reigns is not that authority. It's amazing. Influx, right? It all works together. It is the authority, but it's also the influx of your karma and your life force. Yes. Thank you so much, ladies. Please let my classmates know who you are and how long you've been practicing and what led you to the practice. Very quick, brief summary. I will start. My name is Kayla. <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> I got started practicing from going to the Chicago Youth Festival in 2010. I got to watch 300 taiko drums get set up. And my mom was like, she was getting shakubukud. Shakubukud. Shakabuku. I was Shakabuku and I grabbed my Gahonzong at the end of November on the 29th. I was shakabuku by an amazing male host sister, Miss Dion Smith, back in 19. Oh, because Seven was born in 99. So. 98. All of. Um. Seven was born in 99, and we became homeless. So I was being shakabuku in October of 99. Cool. I was hearing her chant in her room, and so when she was chanting, I was like, Under. like magnetized to her door for like almost an hour. Like she chanted for a really long time, and so like as Taryn passed, I was like, I am standing outside this woman's door. Go do something. <laughs> Miss Kathy, what does shakabuku mean? When I hear the word Shakabuku, I think about how did I learn about this Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And I actually learned about this Buddhism in 1974. Ooh. Herbie Hancock used to um, play at different concerts throughout the country. And when he would play, he would, um, the people that were practicing Buddhism in that community would be able to go and listen to him. And then afterwards, he would talk with them about Ooh. Buddhism. 
And so that happened. And one of the young men that he was explaining Buddhism to is actually the person who first asked me to go to a meeting. Oh, and nice. so I went, and honestly, I didn't understand it at all. But um, I started reading, you know, more about it. And um, there was a publication that I started reading. It was called The World Tribune. And they had stories in there about people who chanted and then what happened in their lives. Mm. And I thought, as I read these stories, they're paying these people. I don't believe it. I don't believe <laughs> any of it. And I did this for about nine months. And then... My New Year's determination, January of 1975, I thought, well, I'll try it. I'll just try it. And I've been doing it every day since. I love it. Ah, so cool. Did you go to a Herbie Hancock concert afterwards? No, I never went to a Herbie Hancock Never, not once. But today, Herbie Hancock does have different lectures online that you really? can find where he's explaining about Buddhism. Oh my god. Yeah, and mm. they're really good. They're very, very good. Plus, he wrote a book that he has got a dialogue with Daisakuri Keda. No and, way! Yeah. Oh, definitely got to pick those up. Pick yeah. those up, people. Yes. yes. Okay. Reintroduction into Buddhism. So, after hearing her out of her room in 99, then time had passed. We got in our own place. After. Three months, we were able to get our own. In March, we had our got our own place, and then this was in two thousand. So two thousand, and here we are. Come two thousand, so then we got our own place, and now two thousand and two is when the movie came out with love got to do with it, mm-hmm. and so Tina Turner. And I was like, oh my gosh. No way. And so then just that time passed. And so the seed was planted. She planted the seed. And so I always had a searching spirit. It was just searching for something stronger because of the trauma that I had growing up. Something, something. So then here it is come 20, oh yeah, 20, oh, 24, Dion had kids when we moved down Earl Street. And so then she sent me. We were, we were still talking and sending. She, that's when there was no phone. Well, call on the phone. Yeah, you could talk on the phone. Then After nine. <laughs> <laughs> and he talk after, yes, because it was free after nine. Because let me tell you, no cell phones then, but we were still on the regular phone, but it's still charged. Mm-hmm. So letters, letters and letters. So mm-hmm. we wrote and wrote. And so then she wrote me and I wrote her back. And she was like, oh my goodness. And so then... Finally found out my favorite all-time song was It's All Because of You by Sukiyaki, which is her family's band. Uh. Never knew this until the book came out. And then I was like, what book? Winter Turns Into Spring. By who? By the Bailey family. (laughs) Shameless plug! Love you! (laughs) And so then I was just like in elation because Dion never told me about anything. I just knew that her mother was Japanese. Her, her grandmother was full of Japanese. Father, black. So she's a mixed breed. Because I always say, you have the most beautiful eyes. And she's like, my mom, my grandmother is Japanese. And so learning of that never told me the family story of who they were and what they were about. They were a singing family out of Chicago. Sung for President Ikeda when he first came to Chicago. Never knew any of this until the book came out. So I've always held her. And- who is President Ikeda? <laughs> President Takeda is the um, he's our mentor, and he um, is actually the um, the person who brought Buddhism from Japan throughout the whole world. So in 1960, he became the president of our of our um, organization, and a few months later, he started going throughout the world. And the first place he came to is the United States. And he went to Hawaii, he went to Seattle, he went to Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Uh New York. He went up to Toronto, and he went to Washington, D.C. And everywhere he went, there was a few Japanese people, you know, that were doing this chanting, Uh Nam no Horenge Kyo, and he encouraged them. And 
they stayed and that's really how this Buddhism has grown in this country is because of the encouragement he was able to give to these really Japanese war brides. Mr. Kid has such a prosperous and amazing life. He's talked to everyone. He has, there's a, okay. The Buddhist religion is based on the Lotus Sutra, the study of the Lotus Sutra. And Mr. Kid was like, oh my God, this is so convoluted. This is so like, over our heads. Let's just have a discussion with the four most scholarly people I know. And let's digest this together so it could be easier for our followers to understand. And there are... 18 volumes? Of, the of, Human Revolution. The Human Revolution. No, the Wisdom of the Lotus Sutra. Oh, five. Yes. Five. five. Five volumes of it. And they just diluted. Six. Six, Six volumes. They diluted <laughs> and digested. I have one here. Yes, that's volume four. Yeah. This is examining the chapter that we recite when we do Sancho and Gonyo and whatnot. Okay, Mom, get to the end. Oh, so then hearing of her story, when it turns to spring, and then reading the book, you get that I've known the whole, like, I've just, you know, like, I've lived with her forever. I'm just like, it's almost like knowing her and get then the reading the book. I'm getting there. So then I didn't start chanting until 2010 after I got my go. Well, no, so. Gay Pride Parade. Oh, nine, I got my <laughs> go home zone and then. I was doing the whole spiritual cleansing and got pregnant, and then, so, twenty um yes, twenty oh nine is when I got my phone and started chanting. So now we are here in twenty twenty four. After mommy got her gohonzo, I went to the Chicago festival. I chanted for them to go, and they made it. Was it. Amazing! It was impossible. So I did not have no money for that. Crazy! I had never seen so many happy people in one space. I was very freaked out. And I was like, I can't believe my mom trusted me with all these happy strangers. <laughs> what the hell is going on? And then I realized, like, oh, they're happy for a reason. It's not, like, creepy. It's not, like, cult happy. So that was cool. Oh, my God. And I was freaking out. Let me tell you. I was freaking out. The only reason I calmed down was because I seen my third grade choir teacher, Mr. Harper. Oh, God. Yes, Mr. Oh. Harper. I seen his hair. I was like. That's Mr. Harper. There's no way that's not Mr. Harper. God would not put me in this state without Mr. Harper. And he turned around. I was like, ah! And I just ran up to him and I squeezed him so hard. I love you. Yeah, I was yes. your music teacher. So when Kayla came back, it was just so amazing. And then amazing. Lynn. I sat with Lynn and Mr. Harper. I was freaking out. Wow. I had no... Don't ever do that to your children. Don't do that, people. At least send one person that's recognizable because, woo, child. I watch way too much ID channel for that one. Mm-mm. It was bad. <laughs> anyway, I am on page 174. Bodhisattvas go out of their way to take on hard work. Mr. Ikeda says, Indeed, bodhisattvas are those willing to go out of their way to take on hard work, who possess the spirit to eagerly undertake difficulties for the sake of the law, for other people, and for society. This is the very antithesis, antithesis. antithesis for being self-centered. Sudo says, those dwelling in the six paths, hungry, hell, animality, anger, humanity, and heaven, and the two vehicles of voice hearers and cause awakened ones are self-centered. The world of bodhisattvas is a realm in which people thoroughly dedicate themselves to other people and the law. Thus is the exact opposite of what we find in the other worlds leading up to the two vehicles. Reaching this state entails fundamentally transforming our life state, which is what Miss Kathy was just explaining. <laughs> Nichiren Daishonin says, The world of bodhisattvas, those who remain among the ordinary mortals of the six paths of existence, thinking little of their own lives but much of the lives of others, aiming always to take evil upon themselves and to dole out good to other beings. Bodhisattvas treat themselves lightly while cherishing others. And they take things that are difficult and painful on for themselves while imparting joy onto others. This is what I feel like the cause for most bodhisattvas are. Everyone that I've known in this practice has had some type of pivotal moment in their suffering that made them like super determined to not feel like that again, right? Mm -hmm. And I need every single one of you watching to make a determination to not feel as bad as you felt 
ever again. Like there has to be some moment in your life where you're like, I have to, I can't, I can't continue like this. My life has so much more purpose. There's so much more greater meaning to me. I can feel my own power churning and it is not for this. Thank you so much for coming to class. I appreciate you. Do your homework. Affirmations, negative thought logs, prayer logs. Do your homework. Stay consistent. Flow with your chi. Practice. You got this.